the explosions heard in and around Kiev. You can see the streaks in the sky there. We just heard from Clarissa Ward. The thinking is that maybe Ukrainian air defense shooting down Russian missiles on their way into the city. We have seen the effect of these Russian air attacks in the Kiev region. This is an apartment complex in a suburb. At least one civilian died here, several more injured. You can see how the civilians are suffering. And then we have a haunting image that we're seeing for the first time this morning. This picture was taken last week, a pregnant mother being pulled from the hospital in Mariupol when it was hit by the Russians. We have word this morning that she and her baby have died. So you can see the toll that this is taking on the Ukrainian people. I want to bring in CNN military analyst, retired Army General James Spider. Mark Spider, nice to see you this morning. The reason I wanted to give people an update on all that is you say what we are seeing uh, is an increase in the tempo and terror by the Russians. What do you mean? Well, clearly what the Russians have not been able to do over the course of almost two weeks now of uh, military invasion is achieve a sense of pace and momentum in their operations. They're stalled around Kiev. They have not been able to take any major city, Kiev, Kharkiv, or Odessa yet. Clearly, they've taken some uh, cities that haven't been able to resist. We use tactics that are not unusual for the Russians, and that is to take their military. They've not been able to achieve this success, and so all of a sudden, in order to gain some momentum, they start using very indiscriminate targeting, which is SOP, standard operating procedure for them anyway. So we're going to see an increase of the use of weapon systems to really go after the morale of the Ukrainian citizens. The military is holding incredibly strong, but they want to make sure that the, plan, you know, the, the platform upon which this military stands is support of their citizens, support of the nation, the sovereignty of Ukraine. That is what the Russians are trying to attack right now and hope that they can chip away at that. Civilian suffering by design. Spider, you think that the next Russian target could be Odessa here on the Black Sea coast. I can give people a sense here of how the Russians have been making progress coming up from Crimea, trying to move either directly to Odessa here or along the coast. Why? Why Odessa right. next? Well, it's very, it's very obvious that the operation has gained very little success. Obviously, there's been some uh, some, some destruction, obviously, and some rubble that we see in Kiev and the major cities. And two and a half million uh, immigrants now have pushed their way into Western Europe. So the whole thing is incredibly tragic. But the Russians have not been able to do anything militarily. Would imagine, unconfirmed, that some senior leaders are probably being pushed aside because they lied to Putin about their readiness and their intelligence was bad about the Ukrainian ability to um, resist. And so what you need to do now as a military leader, I would say, look, let's continue to position ourselves in and around Kyiv. Let's maintain our artillery fire, our rocket fire in at Kyiv. Don't push any forces in there because we haven't been doing it very well. But what we need to be able to do is focus. If we need additional forces, don't put good money after bad. Let's put some forces down in the south where we've achieved some success. We, Russian forces, have achieved some success and go after Odessa. If you can get Odessa, you've now completely isolated Ukraine from the Black Sea. And the Russian Navy is sitting down there and they're in a position to put Marines ashore and they're in positions to continue to provide that type of naval gunfire. So I would say divert resources down toward Odessa. That's a target they've indicated they need to get. Uh, it's interesting because we have seen sort of intensified strikes from the air around Kyiv. How many ground troops would it require for the Russians to take Kyiv, Spider? Certainly more than what they've put on the ground so far. Kyiv is a city of about two and a half million, let's say three million folks. When you look at the kind of the counterinsurgency calculus of all of that, we're looking at a thousand soldiers that would be necessary to get into Kyiv and then start that very methodical, very precise, and in the case of the Russians, it's not going to be very precise. It's going to be very brutal. But you got to go from door to door, building to building, block to block, street to street in order to achieve this success. And that's where the defender has this immense advantage. And the Ukrainians have indicated that this is where they're going to make a really good stand.
in, you know, in addition to what they're already putting up. It's quite phenomenal what the Ukrainians have been able to do. And that interview that Bri Brianna just had with that soldier, now a civilian, had served in the U.S. military in Afghanistan, quite phenomenal, quite phenomenal. It shows the level of resistance and will. Yeah, what struck me about that interview was the, the smile on his face, the obvious pride he's taking in oh, yeah. the work that he's doing and the sacrifice that he's making. Retired Army General James Spider-Marks, great to see you this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you, John.